I shall be talking to you about surgical site infections today. The objectives of the lecture is to provide an overview of the epidemiology of surgical site infections, to elaborate on the types of surgical site infections which will be mentioned as SSI in the slide, to understand the role of antimicrobial prophylaxis in surgery, review the risk factors of surgical site infections and to discuss the preventive strategies in surgical site infections. If you look at the importance of surgical site infections both with regards to public health and with regard to clinical implications for the patient, it figures as the third most common cause for of nosocomial infections contributing all, to almost 14 to 16 percent of cases. SSI occur in 2 to 5 percent of patients undergoing inpatient surgery and it is the most common nosocomial infection among surgical patients about 38 percent out of which two third are incisional SSIs and one third are organ or space SSI, the organs which may be accessed during surgery. With regard to the clinical implications, 7 to 10 additional post-operative days can be a result of such infections. It leads to increased mortality and morbidity. It causes a lot of money to treat such patients and the use of antibiotics for such patients can also lead to an increase in antibiotic resistance. Up to 60 percent of SSIs have been, have been estimated to be preventable if you follow evidence-based guidelines. You need to understand the differentiation between or the differences between colonization and contamination before we go on to surgical site infections. Colonization refers to the presence of bacteria in a wound with no signs or symptoms of infection and the usual colony count is less than 10 power 5. Whereas contamination is generally a transient exposure to organisms which can lead to varying concentrations of bacteria in the affected area and the time of exposure suggested is probably less than 6 hours. A contamination can subsequently lead to surgical site infections and this can be prevented by use of appropriate antimicrobial prophylaxis. We need to define surgical infections, surgical site infections uh, at first. An infection is that which is associated with signs of inflammation which is redness, swelling, pain and warmth. Usual colony counts of bacteria are more than 10 power 5. This can be purulent or non-purulent and it generally leads to an increased length of hospital stay for the patient and also has an economic effect for the patient. So a surgical wound is a surgical site infections but sometimes surgical site infections may not be obvious as wounds in the exterior.